Okay, Maestro, hit it. I'm Wally Boat. I didn't know you knew Mickey Mouse. Museum of the Weird. The dawn of a new era. Just a dream away. I want to talk a bit about your work in building the Mr. Stay Puff costume with Ghostbusters, as well as your puppeteer work in there, because this was, I think, kind of helped transition along the line for Jim Henson? Well, it's interesting because you have the West Coast and you have the East Coast and Jim Henson Mm -hmm. was on the East Coast. And we had a group of puppeteers, very talented puppeteers on the West Coast. And and never the twain should meet for a while. I mean, if you went over there to do a Sesame Street, originally uh, Muppets was done in England. So that's Mm -hmm. across the pond, you know. So we were watching Jim Henson and Frank Oz and hearing about how these two men in college thought, hey, let's create a character and it explodes. Bert and Ernie, Sesame Street, then Muppets and blah, blah, blah. Jim, Mm -hmm. passionate Jim and his cohort, passionate Frank, um, just more, 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 bum, 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 bum. And the next thing you know, you have 10 years of this beautiful imaginative show that we all loved. And, and, and every week we were hanging on our seats to watch the Muppet show. Mm-hmm. And thank goodness Disney plus has resurrected it because oh, absolutely. there are shows there that I absolutely love. But meanwhile, on the, on the West coast, we didn't have access to Sesame street. And so we had a group of us that uh, did our own puppets. Maybe we were building our own puppets. Um, Hanna-Barbera, Hanna-Barbera found me when I was 18 and pulled me on a show that was a ripoff of homage, no, ripoff. (laughs) When Jim announced they were no longer gonna be doing Muppet show, Hanna-Barbera came up with a show called BB Beagle where we brought in stars and we had this beagle that was kind of in the Kermit the Frog position. And the song was almost, a direct it, it was almost the same tune but it was put on the grease paint and light the, it mm. was it was taking everything <laughs> that and doing yeah. it and we shot it in Canada and it was fun and we met some people and then after that I was uh asked to audition for Sid and Marty Croft they were doing a pup they were looking for puppeteers and I auditioned and was one of three women out of 30 people So three women and the rest were men out of 30 people. I did voice work with June Foray. We did comedy with uh, 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 Harvey Limbeck. We did, um, we did, and and they had shows for us to do. So we were performing. We did, I worked for, um, I did uh, uh, an amazing show with with some characters for Oral Roberts Celebration called The Fudge Family, which was just weird. Come on now, you two got a kiss. Oh, my word, reminds me of my first date with Grandpa. Too surreal for words. But here we were doing whatever little puppet things we could do on, on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, I was sculpting and creating out of foam. I was building things out of foam, the kind you sit on your couch, the mattress, you open up the, you unzip the cover and there's foam inside and you sculpt and you carve or maybe you don't, but I wanted to make stuff and that material was abundant. So I did. And a friend of mine saw it from Hanna-Barbera and heard they were doing a show called uh, a film called Dune. Mm-hmm. And I stunt up, stunt. I went in and I built the still shoots for the original 1984 Dune, which and then from the actors did say they loved those suits because I was reading up on that um, before this interview, and the actors said they absolutely adored those suits because they said that they made them look super sexy, and they <laughs> said it was hotter than heck outside, but they loved the suits. So here's me stunt doubling for uh, Sean Young. Oh, wow. And you can see my hair is that, like I said, my hair changes when I finally do my memoir. It's going to be shots of my hair. <laughs> but uh, but this is me um, in the still suit because Sean Young was in a nice, cool trailer while I ran around in Mexico being all hot for her <laughs> long shots. 
And here I am doing body casts for the actors. So the first thing you do is a body cast where you take a cast of the actor. And then above, of course, you guys remember Sting as the the amazing character. Mm -hmm. So here's the battle. But what you're going to find out is when people just took the bodysuit and they glued the foam pieces on to the suit, uh, if they weren't paying attention, you can see that on Kyle, there's that crinkle. You see that crinkle in his leg Mm -hmm. where it it buckles? It's not supposed to buckle, Mm -hmm. but it buckles because some people don't know how the foam works, but I Mm -hmm. did. And so here's another one of the body cast of the actor. And this is me in the corner. And then um, my stunt double and then sting. And then so you can kind of see here I am. So we paint, we, we made them out of foam and then we coated them in a balloon rubber. And then they were sprayed in a booth. So you can see here, we did this one for kinds, who, which uh, when they pull it, the water is supposed to come out. And then here's the suit all beautiful. Mm-hmm. after it's been painted and everything so just gives you an idea of what we we did for dune so i built the suits and then they said oh my goodness you're a tiny person why don't you go down to uh mexico and stunt double for sean young but we were this ragtag group of builders mm-hmm. and fabricators and performers and people would say hey man uh ghostbusters is hiring And we'd be like, is that a movie? Yeah, that's a movie. (laughs) And then just like, okay, off we go down to Marina Del Rey in this big pile. And uh, we went down to Ghostbusters and, um, and they asked me when they looked at my portfolio, they said, oh, you're a puppeteer. Do you think if you are the terror dog that Sigourney Weaver turns into that it will be more feminine? And remember what I said, answer is always yes. <laughs> so I auditioned and got that part. Okay, so she's a dog. Well, my friend, Bill, he did this to pitch the uh, Marshmallow <laughs> Man. So this is his sculpture, Bill Bryant. His, his, Bill Bryant, his sculpture is this, and that's him inside there. So he presented this to the powers that be, his idea of what Mr. Stapoff should look like. And as a result, they fell in love with it. It's the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Lo and behold, here we are in the studio. (laughs) You can see I have my little afro going on there and my friend in the back chatting with me as we're building. And here are all the pieces to him. Um, you'll see that it there's a white uh, pod right here. That white pod is dissected like you would do a map of the world. And then it's glued together to create the pod. It's mm-hmm. made out of what's called L200, which is what you find in safety helmets and knee pads that you do when riding a bike. It's that white spongy material. And then the gray you see is fireproof material that's glued over and then this, then we painted it with more fireproof and then we coat it in the white. So we had uh, 18 marshmallow men, three Mm -hmm. heroes that did not burn and the rest were for burning. So as you remember, that's what um, he did was he was set aflame. This is Bill right here. He's the actual designer, creator, and the Marshmallow Man. I told him, you built it, you designed it, you should be in it. And here we're all stretching the white, uh, 100 pounds per square inch white foam so that we can create 
marshmallow men that look like they are all uh, seamless. So mm -hmm. here is where the seams are right there. And so on that, those hide under the collar. And then the guy smiling with me is Eric Fiedler. Um, and then here I am tracing it all out. And then here is an example of what I was talking about. So here is the actual Marshmallow Man suit. And you see the zipper is three quarters in the front, which means that the camera that films the Marshmallow Man as he's climbing the building will shoot from behind and it looks mm -hmm. like he has no seams. Okay. That he's completely done. So each one is done that way. And then I'll show you a picture that I don't know if I show that much, but you have the three quarter here that I just showed you. Then you have the full on, come back, the full on back with the back zipper. You see that? And then you hear you see Marshmallow Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> That's just for you guys. You guys can see Marshmallow Hitler. We'll explain Marshmallow Hitler. There he is. <laughs> Oh we were working gosh. seven days a week and we were really getting tired. So we decided <laughs> that we would, when production came through, we kind of wanted them to know that we needed a day off. So we created Marshmallow <laughs> So just for you and your viewers, we'll show you Marshmallow Hitler. And then us clowning around, being turtles. And, uh, and here's Bill kind of talking. The sculptor is Linda Frobo. She's the lady in the sweatshirt and the golden hair. She was the sculpture of all the faces. And then I was with the team of puppeteers that actually puppeteered it. And here we are on the set at uh, Boss Film. And here's Bill in his little outfit. He looks like a leprechaun. And then <laughs> my friend Diana and Mark, and we're all just helping him take a break on the street set where the Marshmallow Man comes crashing down. So uh it was a lot of fun to be a part of this set. We were also shooting Here I Am Here. Bill is inside the suit and the face I'm making is just for the picture, but I'm actually <laughs> got a tube up the back of him and keeping him cool while in between. Oh, yeah. And then here he is actually behind a blue screen. <laughs> so you get to see kind of what it took to, it was a great to be a part of this film. Oh, so absolutely. great to be a part and of it's, this. And it's so crazy because 2021 is basically the year of Terry Harden because you have Dune and Ghostbusters coming back in the same oh, year. Oh, it's so amazing. It's so crazy. Everybody wants my opinion. Like, what do you think about this? And what do you think right. about that? And I remember that when Dune came out, we actually worked with Frank Herbert, which was such an honor. I love the Dune books, the first three books. And so mm -hmm. being able to work with Frank was just a, a dream come true. But the sad thing was that originally the films were supposed to be like this new Dune where you do the first film in two parts and then the second book as a movie and the third book as a movie. So mm -hmm. book one, two parts, then three and four. But Raffaella De Laurentiis got a hold of it and she decided mm -hmm. to leave 7.5 hours on the cutting room floor. Oh, wow. So... That's how that Dune came to be. And I always mm -hmm. wondered after seeing it, why people loved it so much. Mm -hmm. But after seeing this Dune, I finally understand that, that the 19, the one that I worked on was more to the book. It had the Harkonnens, Harkonians, however you say that, really creepy and scary. Ken McMillan mm -hmm. as the floating fat man is terrifying. That is I, then Vladimir Harkonnen, who encompasses his doom. But this new guy is not so scary. He's more human. Mm -hmm. And so many of the characters in the new Dune are more humanoid. And these guys in the 84 version are really creepy and scary. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people love that old version because it was the book come to life, even though it was kind of a scrapbook of all mm -hmm. three movies, which was terribly mm -hmm. sad, but you can love both films for, I mean, both films are, I mean, the second, this new one is really good. It's mm -hmm. just that they tended to make it more, the people are more human mm -hmm. and um, it's not like my husband loves the, what are they called? The hoppers. He oh, loved yeah. the show ships. He thought those ships were brilliant because mm -hmm. we don't have those. Back then, we didn't have the technology to be able to create stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But you can love both friends for both films. And thanks to the new Dune for making me appreciate the one 
that I worked on. I was mm-hmm. I'm super proud of it. And then, as you said, Ghostbusters Afterlife, which everyone wanted to know, what do I think? Um, it's a love letter to the original. So what's yeah. not to love about it? Right. You know, so people- much nostalgia. Lines. Two. No, th- three. W- wavy lines. It's amazing. You're amazing with your ability to flood my psychic powers. I can't believe you used to shock your students. Between us, I only zap the guys. There's hundreds of thousands of fans out there that love the original Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. And I know this to be true because I've got I've got kids that haven't been born, (laughs) little (laughs) kids that haven't been born that are loving this movie. And you know, the last time I did an appearance. Um, you can get an autographed uh, picture of me with my dog or whatever and the marshmallow mm-hmm. man or whatever. And th- a little, the family walked up and the baby cart was the Ecto-1 and inside oh, was a little so girl, cool. three years old, that was a marshmallow man and a baby dressed as a Ghostbuster. <laughs> and, and you're like, you guys weren't even born. But they, <laughs> they, they love it. And so what's not to love? It's just, I'm really yeah. glad that... Uh, how nice of you to do a love letter and to make it so everybody mm-hmm. can see it and that we can see it. But it's, I do love that it with the kids being in a part of it, it kind of bridges those generations, which is pretty cool. It's sweet. Um, it's Jason's MO. He loves yeah. to do families, Yeah, you know, and it, it, I thought it was a nice, it was really, you know, it's a little slow in the beginning when you watch mm-hmm. this movie. And I knew it was because I'm in the movie theater and the little kids are next to me. We're all, you know, COVID distance, but the mm-hmm. little kids are like, where are the ghosts? Where are the ghosts? Where are the ghosts? For like the first part of the movie, mama, mm-hmm. where are the ghosts? Where are the ghosts? So, you know, the movie is running slow mm-hmm. when you've got little right. kids who are yeah. like, you know, get with it. Come on, let's yeah. go. You know, and you go, but it does heat up and it does really pay off in the end. And, and mm-hmm. so just be patient. Right. Use that time to take your kids to the bathroom. <laughs> that front part, which you know, pop it. If you know they need to go to the bathroom, don't let them do it at the last part. Do it at the front part, and uh, and you'll be fine. But uh, yeah. it is a really sweet movie, and I think a lot of people are going to go and enjoy mm-hmm. it. And it creates more enthusiasm for the original, and that's always a good thing. 